So it's uh, 5.01, Monday, August 5th. I'm gonna call the Alexander Hamilton Copley Trust Fund Board meeting to order. Minutes, it, on our agenda it says to approve minutes, but we think that that was done at a previous select board meeting. And at the last one, we'll bring them back to the next meeting in April. Okay, so we're not confirming that right now, but um, if not, we'll we'll talk about that. Okay, new new business, the Copley, Copley Trust Fund Summary. We do have a summary here of expenditures that have been dispersed mm -hmm. since since 2002, so for the last 22 years approximately. And we also have a fund balance here. Um, do we? Do either of you wanna to speak to this at this point? Is there anything to speak to? I don't, well, a question for you folks. Do you have a copy of this uh, will? Do we have a copy, copy of the of, uh, I, Paragraph 11 of this will, which sets this up. We don't have it describes a describes how it's supposed to be managed. Yeah, we don't have a copy of that in front of us. No, you know, it might be wise that you all get one and read it over before we make the decision. Okay, so you know what, what Mr. Copley wants. Would the board like to hear it? Yes, sure. uh, okay. Yes. Would you mind reading it, reading it to us? Dave? It's not sure, it's not sure. I'll read it though. I'll says, after provision has been made for the purpose of the trust created under paragraph six of my will and for the payment of annuities specified in paragraph seventh, I give and devise to the town of Morristown all the rest residue of my property of every nature remaining in hands of my trustees. The same to be held as a permanent charitable trust fund to be known as the Alexander Hamilton Copley Fund and the net income only to be used for creating works of public utility and beauty for the use and enjoyment of the inhabitants of the village of Morrisville in said town of Morristown, Vermont, and to be confined to the localities within the area of said village or to purposes specifically benefiting its residents. It is my intention that no part of the income, however, shall be used for religious, political, educational or any purpose which shall be the duty of said village of Morrisville or the town of Morristown in the ordinary course of events to provide. Am I speaking loud enough? You yes. sure are, okay. yeah. Uh, the control and management of the fund and disbursement of the income shall be in the hands of a board of five trustees to consist of the three selectmen of Morristown, the first selectman to be its chairman, and then it says, and George Powers and Fred Fleetwood, both of the village of Marsville, to be the other trustees. If for any reason a vacancy shall occur, I direct that such vacancies shall be filled by the remaining members of the board of trustees. As this is a public charitable gift for the village of Morrisville, Vermont, it is my intention that said town shall at all times be officially represented by a majority of the board of the trustees charged with its management. And as you, you know, the board expanded to five. That's why there are five trustees instead of three. One more. Oh, I mean, it then goes on to talk about how the fund would be managed and what we're supposed to do. Like we're supposed to put it, if we do a project, we're supposed to put a plaque up saying they came from Mr. Copley. And um, it says, and we did this once, if uh, you know the principal was impaired, we added the income to the principal. And um, at one point, the one of the selectmen said, well, we put it in, let's take it out now. Well, uh, the people who manage this funds the uh, merchants bank or there's a new name for it now they um said no that's okay. you put it in it's in then um there's a requirement that, it, that this codicil be published in the paper which i don't think it's happened for a while but we should do that and um and then he said that he if 
he wants before any project becomes final that another meeting be held three months after the initial approval to see if that's really what you want to do. Um, I, know you, said, go ahead. I was just going to say, Dick, I know you answered my my questions, my big questions anyways, about what the intention of these funds are that yeah. are within the trust that they... And the rest of the sort of management things, which you can that, read over when you get your... That it serves a public good yeah. and that it also... Um, that it be within the within the village. Yeah. And then, right. then he had a codicil that, like Gloria reminded me, that he um, wanted... Um, if, if the Copley Hospital needed something, they would be, uh, you know, they would be on his, uh, you, we could do it, even though um, it was a project maybe that wasn't completely within the scope of what he initially had proposed. He's always looking out for the hospital. Okay, great. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get into the specific applications that are before us, any questions from the board for for Dick or Gloria? So, Dick, would you just read that one section that says for the beautification and improvement in the village? Because I think that's really the key piece of this. Me, uh... <clears throat> And the income only to be used for creating works of public utility and beauty for the use and enjoyment of the inhabitants of the village in said town of Morristown and to be confined to localities within the area of said village or for purposes benefiting its residents. It is my intention that no part of the income shall be used for religious, political, educational, or any purpose which shall be the duty of the village of Morrisville for said town of Morristown, Vermont, in the ordinary course of events to provide. Thank you. Other questions from the board? At this point, not for me. Well, I'm going to move on then to the two applications. So we have one application from Copley Country Club, and um, it is for. By the way, is there anybody here representing Copley Country Club? I had a feeling that was the case. And she is the president of Copley uh, Right, yes. Okay. I think you've been to one of our meetings in, previously. Uh, for the purpose of replacing the rotting decking on the clubhouse porch, would, would you like to speak to your application? Uh, in particular, uh, there's for my application, I don't have a dollar value here. It, it, it it's right there, us. okay which I just got. You might want to step up to the microphone and, I, and please identify yourself. Um, Karen Otterino, I'm the chair of Copley Country Club Board of Directors. Uh, the proposal that we've had, we submitted uh, a few years ago when the Copley uh, Trust was not in um, really great condition to be able to fund we broke. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to be nice. <laughs> she said we were broke. Um, we had submitted a bid at that point in time and there were not funds sufficient for it. So uh, uh, now upon hearing that there were some funds available, uh, we went out and, and requested a, a new bid on the project because the the last bid that we had submitted, the person was kind of reticent about doing the job. They wanted to do um, the porch in Ipe, a Brazilian tropical wood, and we as a board didn't think that that was very green to truck all this Brazilian hardwood up here and so on. And the, the guy didn't want to really deal with the tracks, which we thought was a longer lasting, more sustainable, a greener option. Um, and so I think that in him not wanting to deal with the treks, he gave us a really large number. So now um, we had a new uh, contractor come in and give which what I think is a more reasonable bid. It is upon today crawling underneath the porch looking at that. There's um, some spots where the joists are only two by fours. And um, <clears throat> when I saw that, it, I was like, holy cow, I can't believe that it's been 
supporting all those people for so long. <laughs> but anyway, there are some sections of the porch that are not undercover. And um, those sections are covered in um, plywood with AstroTurf over top of them. And if you go like this, the screw holes have kind of rotted where they're connected to the joist now. So that bounces. And um, after this winter, I don't think it'll be safe for um, holding up people next year. So it's something that we really need to do. And it is a cornerstone of, of the club. I mean, there's today I was up there, there was uh, like 30 ladies bridge luncheon and the whole porch was filled with uh, people having lunch that weren't golfers. So um, it, it is a really nice place to have, you know, for people to come and sit and enjoy the outside undercover. I, there's not a lot of places around town where you can have a meal outside um, without traffic going by, I should say. And um, anyway, we um, hope you'll consider uh, so that we can continue to make this porch and the restaurant and the clubhouse up there um, usable for the community. And there was a question earlier about the uh, how many, um, what percentage of the uh, members are actual Morristown members. I forget who asked me that. It's 50 to 60 percent, and I can get you the the actual numbers, but it's it's between 50 and 60 percent of the membership are actually uh, Morristown residents. Questions from the board. Um, one of the questions I asked Karen before the meeting uh, was whether they had any uh, reserve funds that they could apply toward this um, bit of $65,000. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, I haven't um, looked at the financials with a mindset to how much. I think that in seeing where the financials are this year, we could uh, conceivably put close to $10,000 towards the project. May I point out that I didn't read this. I also directed no part of said income shall be mingled with other funds or applied in joint undertakings, but that each work established under this gift shall be separate and distinct. Okay. So I don't think adding bare ten thousand. So we either pay for the entire project or that, not at all. Said. Yeah. And okay. I guess my I guess my question is, is that it will just change what their ask is for the project. They were going to apply ten thousand dollars to the project themselves. The ask that they would be coming to the property trust for is fifty five. Project a project can be unless they came to us and said they you know want a deck. I mean. It, the whole project that's just that's my opinion it doesn't say well, it's just it's very clearly it doesn't yeah. want to co-mingle with the other <clears throat> funds or be applied in joint undertakings clear to me yeah well i guess my question would be to you don as you well know i'm a member of copy country club yes and I am should, should i withdraw from this discussion well, the whole issue of rescinding yourself is a matter of whether you feel like you can make an objective decision. I believe I can, but I also know there's potentially the appearance of a conflict of interest. Right. And I do not want to taint this discussion with that appearance. Yeah, it's not a, obviously not a decision I can make for you. It's one that you have to make yourself, but that is really what it comes down to. Can you make a clear unbiased objective decision if you think you can then you do not need to rescind yourself if you don't think you can then you should rescind yourself i believe i can can i ask um i don't think i can <laughs> so i'll stay out of the voting okay okay yeah I, and i was going to ask both of you for your your thoughts on this because you've been the overseers of this trust for a long time, longer than probably the four of us collectively have, have certainly been on the board. I would just mention that we we did apply the resources of this fund to uh, put in the 
water system at the pole. Okay. So I guess my question is, um, is this the only bid you got? Uh, we still have the bid from the previous yeah. bid that was $85,000, and then this bid, bid came in at sixty five. dollars so of course we took the sixty-five dollar we the sixty-five thousand dollar bid. Um, I can put it out there. It was short timing. I've only had less than a week to 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 scramble. I didn't realize that there were funds that were available. So in that time, I have gotten one bid. Um, I can go back and see if I can get another bid. When did the bids go out? The bids, well, the one bid that was there was from Gregory Construction, and that was it's been a few years old and then i just did a bid from arthur stevenson who and he came out today and gate worked up a bid for me for the 65. Yeah, when was the request put out the request was put up well the initial request was i think it was three years ago for the initial request and then on yeah. i just i know that when we go you know we're required by law to, to go for bids and we generally try to get a minimum of Three is that correct? Yeah. So that I'm just. Yeah. Again, it's, it's a timing. Yeah. It's a timing thing. I wanted to get a, a new number that was fresh and that that I I thought was a little more reasonable than the last bid that we got. So that's what I was able to get in yeah. since yeah, Friday. Yeah. So um, I can get another bid if you'd like me to come back with another bid for a comparison. I can do that. I think Gloria, I mean, would you like to weigh in on this? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think it's necessary to go for another bid. Okay. The one we had two or three years ago, I still got it. <clears throat> and uh, the, the fact that it is the second bid and it seems more reasonable, uh, I think that uh, I don't think that we should have to do that. Okay. And it's not our policy as written or anything like that. Okay. So. All right. Do you feel this is an appropriate expenditure for the trust? Yes, but one of the things that I worry about is draining the funds. Right. So, uh, like I said, we would go and we had to stop <clears throat> waiting until we got some money. But the thing is, too, this is really, to me, vital that that country club continue on. And people that are going there now with their meetings and food to grade. There is some precedent um, back two years ago, actually four years ago, um, three, year, three years ago in April, um, they were awarded almost $22,000. Correct. Um, so there is some precedent for funding projects for proper country club. Well, I'm going to, we do have another application up before us. Um, is the board ready to make a decision? Are there more questions for Karen or ourselves? You realize that you then wait three months. Correct. Yes. Correct. So if you would get out of You go right now, and again in three months. Okay. So my my question, Don, is do we want to hear the second application because if there's you know, seventy thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars available in unallocated funds, which I guess, if I'm reading this correctly, that's what we have. Is that correct? I believe we have seven hundred seventy-one thousand. <laughs> However, that application does not fit in with the with the um, how he wanted it taken care of. Because it's not owned by the town, it's not owned by the village. Right. You're talking about the second application. The I'm first one. I'm talking about the Bijou Theater. Bijou Theater. Okay. 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 So, but the country club, in your opinion, does? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. So, before, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, just uh, do we go ahead? I'm just curious about the, um, <clears throat> because I'm new to, new to this. The, um, the seventy thousand five hundred thirty-four thousand. It says market value. Is there any chance 
in three months that this amount would be less than seventy thousand. Sure, it's probably less than that today. Because <laughs> it's based on, so it is. It's invested currently, so it it fluctuates. Yes. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So then that's uh, a good I, point. Yep. I, I have a question down about just that statement as well. If I see where the unallocated funds seventy thousand five thirty four can change. And then to the right, it says principal fund balance as of June thirtieth, a million nine seventy one and change. Trustee limit a million two, surplus seven hundred seventy one thousand. Can can whoever created this or whoever understands this, what is the Gloria, you're saying the available funds are the seventy thousand. That's what the that's what we that's have, our lane history. have to award. Okay. The seven seventy one surplus. Is something altogether different. What? On the bottom right of the sheet that Dick is looking at, yeah, yeah, there's a principal fund balance of a million nine seventy one, and then another million two. I don't know. Okay. Um, what's, what's that? Is? What that is? The number we need to concentrate on, Dick, is the seventy thousand. Seventy thousand, and the fund it, it was worth one point eight. Is it one point eight million? I don't know what this 1.2 million thing subtracted okay. out is. Right. Okay. What, what we're really dealing with is the seventy thousand dollars yes. plus or minus, yep. depending on what the market does that right. we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so. But it seems like, in terms of the market, it's going to be where the market is in three months from now too. Because yeah. this yeah. is going to come back to us for a second mm -hmm. confirming the decision. The bottom has gone out of things. We just have to say no. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if there's not 65,000, we can't partially fund it, right. correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the questions before us is, do we consider the Bijou application now before we take action on either of these? Or are you guys ready to take action on that, the uh, country that's club? That's not a valid uh, request because it doesn't fit in at all with what Okay. Why don't, why don't we discuss the so Bijou? So I guess we need to discuss it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So our second application then is for the Bijou Theater, and they're asking for, I believe, $20,000, and they're looking for that money in order to um, replace and enhance the marquee in front of the theater. Clearly, it's within the village, but the question is, is it a, a, public, um, a public entity? A public utility and so I would uh, open that up for questions or comments from the board is there somebody here to speak to it yeah why don't you come on thank up? you thank you Chris hey Jamie I'm Jamie welcome um, my husband and I bought the theater last June um, and just trying to keep it as a stable Thing in the community. Um, it's definitely took a huge hit during COVID, which caused the Jarvises not to be able to continue on. Um, there was talk about selling it to other people that would turn it into office space or um, apartment buildings, things like that. And we didn't want to see that happen. Um, it is definitely not a lucrative business. Um, so last year we lost about $60,000 trying to keep it open. Um, so our hope was as, as we're putting our own money into improving the inside that people would be willing to help for the marquee is in really bad shape, hasn't had updates in many years, um, is definitely a spot in the community that people know about. There's very few places for any age from you know two to three year olds going to their first movie to 80 to 90 year olds for something in common to do and the theater is definitely one of those places and we're trying to bring that back to the town um and just hoping that we could make it a little more eye-catching and um also repairs that probably need to be made because of the structure of it um thank you jamie and you've not gotten historical status or anything on this, have you? We have not, no. Have you thought about it? So be we did think about that, that, yes. And same as I would say is that it was, I got the email last Friday about the meeting. So it was kind of, I talked to an electrician, um, kind of coming up with an idea of how much at least the lighting and things would help. Um, but the structural piece would be, that's where we'd have to go to the, we could go for historical, see if 
we could get some money there too. That's a, actually a good, would be a good avenue for you. Okay. If, if this doesn't work out, mm -hmm. just because I do love that sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other questions, comments? I got to yield to Gloria and Nick's interpretation of the copies so that it's public, not private money. That obviously concerns me. Basically, <clears throat> it's very clear that uh, it's to be owned by the village or the, or the, or the flood board, and it's not a private entity. It is a, it still is a private entity, but it, I don't see it fitting in with the, uh, with the will. So it's a question of the public utility. Mm -hmm. Great. I, have, I have a question, Jamie. Have you, given that obviously the board's questioning that aspect of, mm -hmm. of this, have you approached MDF, the Morristown Development Fund, for possible so, uh, Yeah, we have help? actually talked to Todd also in the office of trying to figure out, because there are, we have looked at other theaters in other states that actually the town owns, um, and then having like a management company run it um, just because the expenses are so high. And that is something we have talked to Todd about, that there are companies out there that it could be run by the town more. Um, but we were kind of just that last ditch effort of let's try to keep this, <laughs> you know, so that it isn't an expense on the town. I will just mention the MDF just met, mm -hmm. and we're six to nine months before we're going to be able to loan. We're restructuring, so just so everybody's aware of that. But that, but that might be an appropriate place for, for them to go. I, I, I can't speak. I don't want to voice an opinion here, but I just want to be clear that yeah, um, those they won't even be able to apply for yeah. like nine months. So that's probably not a valid right uh, resource. But Brent. Brent. So the NDF fund would not require that the town own mm -hmm. the, the business. It, it's meant for lending to businesses and yeah. it's up to the board to make decisions about how they want that lending to occur. Um, as Laura mentioned, it's in the process of being amended, with the, both the management as well as um, using a third party to assess mm -hmm. um, loan applications. Um, but I, I want to reiterate that that wouldn't cause the need for the town to have ownership. It's meant for right. independent businesses. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we have two applications before us. Um, are there any other comments or questions? I would. I really want to keep me to do I go way back. I used to talk in. And in fact, her name was Gussie. No, I remember Do you remember Gussie? A month? No, no, anyway. Not that. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's part of the village as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, it's not that I don't want it out there, but I feel that we have to work with everybody. I think we've all enjoyed the Bijou over the years and our children. I would entertain any motions from the board. Um. <clears throat> I would make a motion to decline the application for the Bijou Theater based on the fact that it does not meet the criteria of um, Alexander Copley Trust. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion to decline the application from the Bijou Theater. No motions have to be made here. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I'm. Yes. yes. So yes. can I can I reject the motion? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to suggest that uh, you remove your motion. I, I would rescind my motion. Would you rescind yes. the second? In that case, uh, if you can make your motion in the positive and the affirmative. I don't know how to do that. So just I, that you would make a motion. You could make a motion to accept the Bijou Theater's application. Okay, and then it would be open for discussion and the vote. Okay, 
So I'll make that motion that we would accept the um, the application for the Bijou Theater. Um, Rick and Jamie, welcome. And do I have a second? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, by the way, for the members of the public, this is the way motions are typically done and um, in the affirmative, and then they can be voted down if that is the will of the board. Uh, any any discussion on the motion as presented? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as uh, stated, say aye. All those opposed? Nay. 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 Abstentions? That would be unanimous. Do I have another motion? I guess the only question before I made a motion on the uh, Cockbury Country Club is, you know, based on the fact that the market dropped 1,100 points today and it's down 2,000 in the last week and a half, um, we don't know what we don't know in terms of marketability. So if we make a motion tonight to approve this and it only has $59,000 of available <clears throat> funds, then it doesn't go forward. I guess my question would be, do they want to get another bid to see if they can come in with a lower number to come back for an application? I mean, we're going to have to wait three months anyway. So, right. I mean, we can make a motion in the affirmative, but if there's no funds there, then they're out three months worth of decision. So, right. So, I mean, go ahead. Lauren. I guess I would ask the question is if, if um, we're to approve this bid and there's not enough funds, um, can the bid be amended in three months? So, to give her time or, you know, the, it's a whole we have a whole fresh look three months from now. Which then would delay it another three months. So, no. well, that's what I'm leaving it up to. Um, <clears throat> that time it's up or down, you know, for, after the three months. And if they want to make another application, yeah, they sure can do that. But then there would be another three months before. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so if we approve 65000 now, they need to come back in three months and ask for the same 65000 They can't come back in three months and amend that to, say, 55000 I think they could, but they would have to have a bid and mm. fit with that particular number. But would they then have to wait another three months after that? I don't think so. Okay. okay. So we're just approving the project. Okay. Could so, the, could the motion say not to exceed sixty-five thousand, or not to exceed the yeah whatever that? Okay, so we have a suggestion. Yeah, not to exceed sixty-five thousand, and then in three months they're going to come back with that final number. We would approve it or not at that point. Yeah. That would seem I appropriate. Think that's a good good point. Yeah. Can I? Yes. Is this motion contingent upon them obtaining? another bit since or not i intended it to be a suggestion mm -hmm. to karen because if you come back in three months and you've only got fifty nine thousand, you need 65 and the project gets declined so I, it was more of a friendly suggestion that if you came back you had a separate bid you could share that and say yes there's sixty five thousand dollars in the copy of trust but we only need 59 then we would approve 59 and you can move forward with your project. That would make sense to me. It would seem like it would behoove the country club to look for another opinion, given that your 65 is so close to what is available right now. Anything you could do to get it down would, of course, enhance your application. So I have one more question for uh, these folks. If indeed, um, because you talked about the fund being broke before. Um, so can we legally um, issue out uh, $70,534? Or do we need to keep some amount in there as a reserve? No, we, there's no requirement in his will that there be a reserve, only that the income is the only thing that can be expended, except for Copley Hospital. So we can we can issue out all of the income. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. 
Okay, I would, uh, any further questions? I would entertain a motion and I would suggest, the chair would suggest to put in the wording not to exceed in the motion. So I'll make the motion to um, approve the consideration of Copley Country Club's funding application for a bid of up to, but not to exceed $65,000 for um, repair of their deck. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have, so, I have a Chris, so I have a motion by Chris, a second by George. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention. We have, so that would be 501. Thank you very much. I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So, we have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous as well. Thank you very much. Do you know if you have available copy of his? I imagine it's it's on record here. I seen you, Don. Thank you. Nineteen forty-one is an amendment. Whenever you're ready, Judy. I don't have the date of his original. You probably are looking at the original will. It's it's uh, paragraph eleven, and that's generally all we have here. So nothing happened at all? I only have two pages. Yeah. That's the uh, amendment. Okay, so I can last. clarify that. Yeah. I'll get you a copy about. of the main thing. Are you good? Like okay. Yes, you can, you can stay, stay as long as you want. Yes, elections are coming up in March, so you're welcome to run. <laughs> so it's 538, Monday, August 5th, 2024. I'm going to call the uh, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. Uh, we are doing this a little bit differently. We thought we'd clean up the meetings a little bit and do liquor and tobacco by itself outside the select board meeting. Do we have any agenda changes or additions? No. We have minutes to approve, uh, but it's been uh, shown to me that the meeting, according to the minutes here, the meeting of December 18th, 2023, which was a while ago, uh, that the meeting was canceled. It says that in the minutes. So I guess the question is, do we still approve these minutes? Pass, pass over. Probably not. Board feeling okay with that? Yeah. I will. I will move on. So liquor license applications, we have none. Tobacco license applications, we have three from Co-Grocers Group, from um, which is 302 Vermont Route 15, Big Intelligence Group, LLC, which is 10 Railroad Street, and MSW LLC, which is 76 Stafford Avenue. Uh, two, uh, the latter two are for tobacco, and the first is for tobacco substitute, substitute, substitute endorsement. Uh, Jason, are we okay with these? Okay, great. Um, I would entertain a motion. I would make the motion to approve the tobacco licenses for Co-Grocers Group LLC, Big Intelligence Group LLC, doing business as well, Legacy Cannabis, and MSW LLC doing business as Best Buds Dispensary. So I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, that would be unanimous, Judy. We have a further request from uh, Black Diamond Barbecue for a request to cater. 
Any issues, Jason? No issues, thank you. I would entertain a motion. I would make the motion to approve the Black Diamond Barbecue uh, approval for catering on August 9th at five o'clock for Ladies Night in Morrisville at 107 Portland Street in Bijou. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye that would be unanimous. I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. A motion by Chris, I have a second by George. All those in favor of adjourning the, liquor, the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting, aye. say aye. aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Thank you. There's a pause here just because we've got to get the technology up and running. No, the microphones are just intended for those on Zoom. So are we not being loud enough? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Lovely. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it is 5.42, Monday, August 5th, 2024. I am going to call the Morristown Select Board meeting to order. Do we have any changes or additions? No. Is that better? Fine. Okay, good. We have minutes from uh, July 15th, 2024 to I, approve. I would move the minutes of July 15th, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from July 15th, 2024, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. New business, uh, we have the approval of the financing for a police vehicle. Brent, you were going to speak to this? Yeah, I'm going to give a, a brief background and then uh, Chief Luna can uh, come up and answer any additional questions. But um, it's for a police car that was in the budget approved by the voters. Um, there is no additional quotes because of the shortage of these police cars. Um, Chief Luna, looked in not only Vermont, but Massachusetts. One became available in New Hampshire, so he was able to secure it. Evidently, he has other police departments asking him how he was able to do that. Uh, the dealership is in New Hampshire. Um, and the only other item I want to bring up before Chief Luna comes up and answers any questions is that originally it was intended that it be a lease financing. And when I inquired into the, the, the financing rate for the lease, it was uh, quite high in my opinion. So. Um, Sarah was nice enough to go out and get some quotes from uh, local banks for traditional financing and um, came in approximately 2% less in the lease financing, so. Okay, great. Okay, so we're looking for a motion to approve the financing. Jason, do you want to speak to this? <laughs> This is for a 2024 Chevy Tahoe PPV, which is a police pursuit vehicle. Uh, we are incorporating emergency equipment into the financing for the vehicle, as well as a new uh, two-way radio inside the vehicle. Our, most of our two-way radios are from 9-11 grants, over 20 years old. So uh, this will be the second time that we've incorporated it into the purchase of the car. They're about 8,500 bucks. Thank you. Any questions for Jason? The, this is uh, well within the budget amount, the 72,000, 73, yes. actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jason. I would entertain a motion. So I would move to accept a bid from Community National Bank for financing the purchase of a 2024 Chevy Tahoe police car with all uplifting costs included for an amount of $72,902.19 
at a fixed semi-annual interest rate of 5.14% for a term of four years and authorize the town manager to sign the loan documents on behalf of the town of Morristown. Second. And is there some question about whether that might be allowed? Yeah, if, if there could just be a slight amendment, Chris. Sure. Um, we have one bank that has basically gone to legal counsel to confirm that the town manager has authority to do so, but we don't want if, hold if, up. Yeah, if we don't want a potential hold up. So if you could add, uh, if allowed by the Community National Bank. Okay, I would, um, I would add that amendment if allowed by the Community National Bank. You okay with second, second that? that? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, good. So the motion would be, I move to accept the bid from Community National Bank for financing the purchase of a 2024 Chevrolet Tahoe police car with all uplifting costs included for an amount of $72,902.19 at a fixed annual interest rate of 5.14% for a term of four years and authorize the town manager, if allowed by Community National Bank, to sign the loan documents on behalf of the town of Morristown. Good. Any any comments, discussion from the board? Okay. I have one hand in the audience. James Brewster, paint scheme. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking about the color. It's uh it's gonna be black just like when we got last year. The doors will be white. Yep. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Alex Sear, live here in Morrisville. Um do you potentially want to amend the motion further to provide for who is to sign the paperwork if the town manager is not allowed to sign it by the bank, or is that automatically the chairman? Or I would assume that goes back to the select board. It goes back to the entire select board via DocuSign, as you traditionally. Okay. So we would the bank would send us electronic documentation that we would sign. But thank you. It might be paper. Okay, so we might need to come in and sign it. Okay. Okay. Regardless, it would be either a paper yeah. sign or an electronic signature. All five of us would sign. Yeah. Sign. yeah. Or at least three. Or at, at least, least three. three. Okay. Identify yourself, please, Tom. Tom on the printout here, it has the total cost of eighty thousand. I think I know what your question is that you didn't really ask. Yes. So, so um, Sarah Haskins, town treasurer, um, that includes the interest. So they would borrow the cost, the seventy two thousand nine hundred. Yeah. But then the interest over the four years is going to be about almost eight thousand. That brings it to the eighty. So we are going to pay eighty thousand for oh, over four years. Okay. Will that be in the budget? What? What's in the budget is actually the um, installment. So you you pay two annual installments or semi-annual installments of the $10,000. Yeah. That's what's in the budget for each year. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Just to make a side comment, if everybody had a copy of the, of the agenda packet, it would be very, very helpful. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um, we have a motion in front of us. Go ahead, Brent. I, I just want to make everybody aware that the agenda packet is online. And um, if you're not able to print it yourself beforehand or pull it up on a tablet, phone, um, although it's a great cost savings to the town to not print out, you can individually contact the town administration and we'd be happy to print out packets. Um, traditionally, we have 10 on a traditional select board meeting. We have 10 of just the agendas and typically seven are, are left. So they're thrown into the recycling. OK, I end with the conversation back to approving the financing of the police vehicle because that's our agenda item, not um, the packets. Come on up, do it. And just keep your comments to the police vehicle, the financing of the police vehicle, please. I got a very important comment. Tony Cody, Cody Hill. Jason, I want to thank him publicly 
And if this vehicle has anything to do with that arrest in this town last week, then buy them too. Jason and Todd did one hell of a job getting that loser off the street. Thanks. Thank you. Agreed. Okay. We have a motion in front of us. All those in favor of the motion is presented. Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Uh, errors in admissions certificate. We have one um, errors in admissions certificate, and um, it is to reduce the um, property value from $529,400 to $359,400. And this is because of water damage from a new addition, which resulted um, in permit work not completed by April April 1st, 2024. So it is due to, I believe, flood damage. Do we have, uh, do we have any listers here? We do not, okay. There's a uh, typo on here. I'm not sure if that matters. Lost in or, or damage. Just, I don't know if it matters for the records, but. Okay, yeah. Uh, I would entertain a motion. I would move to accept the um, reduction in that Eisenbaum, David, and Claire's property from 529400 to 359400 and a total of $170,000 reduction due to water damage to the new addition. Do I have a second? So I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by Richard. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> that would be unanimous. Um, consideration of adopting a charter. So at the last charter meeting held a few weeks ago, the uh, charter committee voted to uh, move the charter that we have been considering now for multiple meetings to the select board. Uh, it is here tonight for our consideration and it's here for our consideration as to what the next steps might be. And the next steps um, would be to, if we so choose tonight to present this to the voters of Morristown to become our town charter. The voters of Morristown must vote in favor of the charter for it to move forward. When it does, if it, if it, if we do decide tonight to, to uh, put on the ballot and uh, later on in the meeting, we can decide what that ballot's going to look like. But if we do decide to put that on the ballot and if the voters of Morristown do in fact vote for it, it would go to the legislature uh, for the legislature legislature of Vermont to decide whether or not um, the charter <coughs> charter would be instated. So I would uh, entertain a motion from the board. I would move to approve the town of Morristown charter, which would include the corporate existence retained clause, the general law application clause, and the town manager clause. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by Richard. Do I have any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented. Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Thank you. Moving on, new business, MERP grant assessment. Um, Brent, this is going to you. And this is uh, just for the board and the public. This is a FYI. We're not looking to take uh, action tonight. So MERP stands for a Municipal Energy Resilience Program, and it provides support and technical assistance and funding to help communities reduce energy use and create cost savings. Um, Victoria Helwig of Memorial County Planning Commission has been working with the town of Morristown, assisting us um, with conducting assessments. The assessments were conducted by uh, an entity, I believe, out of Texas. Um, and they went through all of the, the town-owned buildings, uh, police department, EMS, town garage that we own, and, and the administrative building. 
Um, these are considered level one building assessments. And depending on the building, the estimate is approximately $4,600 per assessment. So, uh, and the average price for uh, a level one is $1.25 per square foot, up to 5,000 square feet. So, uh, the town obtained this for free. Um, and the, the vendor has come back with recommendations for us. Uh, those recommendations are, uh, are vast and can create quite significant uh, energy savings, especially at our EMS building. Um, I've had an initial conversation with Victoria of uh, the Planning Commission, and we've developed some initial ideas. Um, the next phase is to implement those recommendations, and that would be 100% paid for with zero match from the town of Morristown as well. Yeah. So what we're looking at is approximately $160,000 worth of improvements. And speaking with her, we'd like to focus on the police building. Um, and most, if not all, of the recommendations for the police building. Uh, we do have some questions about um, some of the recommendations, but uh, because of the building is housing so much of our, our police force, it's, it doesn't really fit what our police force, you know, the, the manpower that we have. We're looking at trying to make improvements when we can. Um, we are looking to, to make various improvements. I'm going to have another meeting with Victoria later this week. There are some requirements around ADA, um, American with Disability Act, and we're going to do some further assessments then. I just wanted to bring all of this to your attention so that uh, in the future when we move forward, you're, you're somewhat in the know. And you know, if any of you have questions, please feel free to contact me and I invite the residents if they have questions about it to feel free to contact me. Great. Thank you, Brent. Questions from the board? Comments? The only, the only question I had, and I think you just touched on it, is um, the police station is not really compliant. And um, in the uh, section 20 of the um, frequently asked questions, it talked about the fact that uh, if it's not compliant, then you'd use 20% of the grant towards ADA improvements. And there was nothing listed in the six items for the police department. So is that what you were referring to to talk with them about how that gets addressed? Yes, and my understanding is it's, it doesn't have to be totally compliant. It just has to be an improvement. Um, and those improvements are also covered by the grant. So um, that's what I'll be doing this week with LCPC is going to each building that we're considering using funds and looking for improvements that can be made that are practical and cost effective. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So the key words for me here are this is free money. We don't need to match it. And clearly it's going to be of a great benefit to the town. Yes. And uh, yeah, if we can put it towards the police department, that's great. The police building. Other questions, comments? Okay. I I'm, do have one comment. I mean, <clears throat> what's ahead of it is, um, we've been talking about the EMS kitchen and you've looked at the EMS building. So I'm just hoping that engineering, <laughs> that maybe um, because that kitchen is incredibly inefficient that might expedite um, the kitchen over there. Oh. We have it in the budget, but anyway, just a, just throwing it out there. Yeah, so we already have uh, volunteers uh, working on the kitchen. And if so, you okay. turn to, there is a section for, for each building. Oh, okay. So um, if you look at the emergency services building, it's all really energy related. And I totally understand that you can get energy you know, related uh, right. ovens, et cetera. But um, I, I don't know that that was okay. Just reviewed. That I... Here's the fly. Thank you. Yeah. These folks have been working really hard, nickel and diamond, and trying to get this move forward, so. And potential substantial money for EMS too, yeah. for the building. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, come on up. Jerry Throne. 
uh, with regard to the question about uh, whether uh, ovens are on this list, I didn't see any ovens on the list. We did buy a new oven, which is going to be going in to the EMS kitchen. Okay. Just wasn't sure if there was some gray area that perhaps something that hadn't been in the budget might fall into this category. All right. Just a thought. All right. Um, I did have a question, though, a uh, general question, and uh, uh, particularly, I mean, it's it's all the uh, facilities that they made recommendations for, but in particular, uh, I think it was the police department uh, where they were recommending uh, putting uh, no uh, fixed tilt solar panels, and the uh, the payback is seventy nine years. Yes. So. I would think that would be a red flag for everybody to, you know, kind of think. Do, Recording know, in progress. Really, that's something that's, re that's really, uh, you know, worthwhile. Um, well, it, it it depends on how you consider it. Um, we did discuss that the lengthy time period for payback. Um, it is something that can be utilized by the building if. If the building were ever sold, it might it might increase the, the value of the building that is sold. Um, and this is zero match. So we, we don't want to be wasteful, of course, but um, you know, Act 248 in the state is is uh, is here for a reason. And so we are we are considering all of the of the recommendations for for the police department. Um, but I'm happy to discuss with you and any other residents you know, that might have reticence about that. No, I understand. I understand uh, you know, what your uh, thoughts are about it. That's fine. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, I'm going to move on to old business. Number one, consideration of the zoning bylaws, the proposed changes. Um, I believe, Brent, you have some comments alluded to this you'd like to start the conversation sure so um you know before before i came on board um, uh, the administration and at least certain members of the select board um rightly you know had concerns about the just the zoning process in general how complicated it is um and then with the state mandates that were coming down but also um <clears throat> of importance the town plan and wanting to make sure that everything matched so one of the first things that i did uh, when i came on board was sign a contract with uh, sterling Mount mountain and uh, david white consultant um, so these state mandates are very complicated and they're made even more complicated because uh, additional mandates were put into place uh, this last legislative session. Um, I know that they were vetoed by Governor Scott uh, and then his veto was overridden. Um, our zoning director and our planning commission have been working very, very hard um, on these zoning changes, but I think it was astute for the select board and the administration to have a third party um, review these proposed changes. Uh, especially with a town plan um, that's being amended as, as we speak, being considered for amendment. So uh, the report found some significant aspects of the zoning bylaws uh, that weren't really coordinated with our town plan. So the report recommends that uh, the zoning bylaws be rejected, and it goes into great detail. Um, and I don't want people to be confused. Zoning is very complicated, and it's been made even more complicated by state mandates. And, you know, having in conformance with the town plan, um, you know, our planning council works very hard, and our, our zoning director does as well. So um, I think it was astute that the select board uh, had a third party to, to do review and um, the recommendation is either uh, the planning council reject return it to the zoning director and the planning council for, for you know, consideration of, of 
new zoning uh, bylaws or uh, the select board come up with their, their own suggestions. My personal opinion is that um, they be rejected based upon this report and return to the, the planning council and zoning director for, for evaluation and future potential amendments. Todd is, is here to, to answer questions and, and speak <coughs> to you all. Um, Todd had some questions um, about the report. So we, or I submitted it to legal counsel. Um, his name, his first name happens to be David as well, David Root. He's uh, very highly regarded. He is an executive board member of the Vermont Planning Council Association. I don't know if I got that right. I'm sure Todd will be able to correct whether or not I did. Um, and he stated in his, his response that ours is probably the first opinion cast uh, in association with these new zoning uh, or state mandates for municipalities. So, Thank you, Brent. Yeah, I just wanted just to add to that. I know, Todd, I think you want to say something here, but, um, you know, Todd has put a lot of work into this. Our zoning administrator, the planning council has put a lot of work into that, into this. It's very much appreciated. Um, it's not an easy task writing these, and certainly not an easy task when the state is telling us what we can and can't do, and when the state is changing what they're telling us what we can and can't do. Uh, we did have a very extensive study done. I've, I've read the report. Um, it is not. Uh, it's not a, an opinion on our zoning administrator or our planning council, but it's just a matter of making sure that we get this right, that we do the right thing, um, so that we are not creating a situation down the road that would come back to haunt us. So thank you very much for that, Brent. And I do have one question, because um, Don just referred to we, and you've said the select board. I don't remember ever discussing this. This actually is, study came as a complete surprise to me. Um, not that in having read it, I think it was a good thing, but I just want to be clear. Yeah, I did not, uh, we, I had no idea this was happening. <laughs> so I do, and if you read through it, I will say, because um, I've been on planning and with Todd, it's so incredibly complicated and it, it's so many gray areas and it's, it is set up for um, some objectivity and which could end us up in court. So I understand, but I just want to talk about the process that when you say the select board, I definitely did not, I don't remember a conversation um, approving a payment or a review of this. Just want that for the record. The only thing I would add to that is, is that under the town manager form of government, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be approved. It doesn't need to be approved by the select board. It is a manager's prerogative to be able to do that and make that decision. Um, I know that several board members, including myself, had some questions about uh, the bylaws as a whole, but also, and I asked the question early on in the presentation to the board of whether that it complied with the town plan. And it clearly, in some instances here, does not. So uh, it was the manager's decision to do that, to expend the money um, and to get um, a peer review on it. And I, I greatly appreciate that. It just would have been nice to have been informed that it was happening. So, no and not to be told, said that we generated it. So. Other comments from the board, Brent? So uh, if I think that I said uh, at least some of the select board members because uh, this process was begun before I started. So, you know, I did bring this attention to Todd of Todd because I wanted his input. Um, and when I realized that not all board members were informed, I've, I've been trying to keep you all informed. So uh, um, it's my, it's one of my primary goals that uh, you all are always informed uh, concerning open meeting laws sort of limit communications, but um, I'm trying to keep you abreast of situations um, 
you know, in accordance with open meeting laws. And I appreciate yeah. your your concern. Um, I I want to clarify that if I didn't state it, that um, at least some of the select board members had, to my understanding, re recommended this. And I think that um, you know I wouldn't have signed it if uh, I didn't agree. I've been on a development review board in Williston, Vermont. I know that being on the DRB is incredibly complicated, and I wasn't even on the planning commission there. So um, just want to assure all of you that I will be doing my utmost to be very, very transparent uh, so that n none of you are ever surprised with, with um, certain decisions are made. Having said that, you know, there are times where I do have the authority to, to make uh, spending decisions and uh, I might not come to you beforehand for approval, but I, I will be trying to keep you in the yeah. loop. Thank you. Other comments? No? So, we have the, we need to consider these zoning law uh, bylaws and these proposed changes. And um, we would need, go ahead, Brent. Uh, Todd is here if you have I was, questions. I, I was, uh, motion to reject would be fine. The bylaws were written as a regard as, uh, to deal with last year's legislative changes, S100. They're meant to protect neighborhoods like George's, for example. They would have guaranteed single family homes in your neighborhood, George, for example. But the, uh, the new legislative changes this year with the Act 250 modernization bill made changes to 24 VSA 4412 which means it's probably questionable that we shouldn't do that anymore because basically we can't stop apartment buildings from coming to any neighborhood with a single family, like Jersey Way or Fairwood Parkway. We can't stop four unit apartment buildings from coming out with the new changes. Okay. So the, uh, when the planning council opposed these bylaws, they were meant to deal with last year's changes and post there when they approved them, when the board approved them, uh, the Act 250 form bill looked dead and the governor was going to veto it and it got life the last minute and the governor did veto it and actually got overridden and even when the select board had its hearing they overridden i don't think it was overridden until a couple of days later we had the trustees hearing so uh, none of us are crystal ball and we'll have to deal with the new uh the act 181 or what changes as we as we uh, go through the next couple months and try to come back with a better bylaw that tries to address the same neighborhood concerns with form requirements instead of use uh, restrictions so we have some work to do Thanks so yeah, my recommendation so you, is to reject, not to send back. I just wanted to be clear. Just so reject. You, right. Okay. Can I ask a question too? Sure. Uh, this report uh, does a real detailed uh, analysis comparing it to our town plan. So does this not apply to our town plan that our town plan was written also based on the current, you know, idea? So does it now affect our town plan drastically that there are certain things in there that I mean, you can take any language out of a town plan. If I'm consulting, I can always mm -hmm. find yes or, or no language from a town plan. Yeah. But the certain things that the planning council wants to do, they may have to change the town plan first, yes. Yeah. So they'll have to get through your current town plan change. They'll have to change the town plan again if they want to go down that road to make those zoning bylaw changes. For example, a majority of the council, not the whole council, wants to do the large minimum lot sizes. Uh, that's one of the issues that the consultant brought up. And um, although I think there's language in the town plan that support that as well, He's using language in the town plan that doesn't support that. So they may want to clean up the town plan about the large three acre aluminum lot size. They want to push that again to not get it rejected based on a town plan compliance issue. Yeah. So the town plan in theory could be, and especially future, could actually be working against us. Correct. Yeah. That's trying to stay ahead okay, of Okay. So today. before us right now are the zoning bylaws. Thank you for those yeah. comments. Um, so I would entertain a motion, and I think our zoning administrator has been pretty clear that he's looking for us to reject these bylaws. So I would entertain a motion. So I will move to reject the amendments as proposed. Okay. Does it have to be a affirmative? You know, and this is a good question, uh, yes. okay. Laura. Yeah. So I learned that lesson the last. Time. Well, <laughs> we we have specific instructions Thank to. You use the term reject because of Vermont statutes around zoning. So it's, so it's hard to create a double, I don't even, like, yeah, I need yeah. to go back to English class. <laughs> Brent, Brent and I had this exact conversation before the meeting, and I brought up the notion that motions had to be in the affirmative. 
but um, so, so make a motion to accept the so what we <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> we 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 do have advice. We do have professional advice that suggests we should use the word reject. Um, the motion, the motion being in the affirmative, is a Roberts rules um, concept. But I like Richard. I like Richard. Okay, Richard. I make a motion to accept the rejection of the amendments as proposed and send the proposed zoning bylaws back to the planning director and the advisory planning council for modifications. Can you drop the part of the send back? I want to make it clear that the pending zoning is not still valid. So I just want the okay. rejection tonight. Okay. So the non-approval. No send back. So I'll amend my motion to. <laughs> it's your motion. I you make can... a motion to accept the rejection of the amendments as proposed. Second. So I have a motion, which Richard can read again if necessary. And uh, I, have, I have a motion by Richard, a second by Chris. Discussion. OK. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, Jersey Heights three acre rule stormwater permit. We've had uh, a number of meetings regarding Jersey Heights and the storm stormwater permit. And we have considered different options for the town. And those options, there's been five options presented. One option was that Jersey Heights form an HOA. That became pretty clear that that was not going to happen. I apologize right now for repeating this. Many of you have heard me say this before, but HOA was one option. Another option was a fire district. That clearly wasn't going to happen. A third option was that we just do nothing. Um, doesn't seem to be the sense of the board that we do nothing and, and pass up uh, some $300,000 worth of grant money from the state and that so that leaves us with really two options at this point a fourth and a fifth option um, the fourth option on my list would be uh, forming a special tax assessment district where we would where the 60 some odd parcel holders in jersey heights would be uh, assessed a a special um, a special tax to pay for this um, pay for the financing of this this permit and i will say that this is not new to the town of morristown this has happened before we do have a special uh, a special tax assessment district in katie's falls the katie's falls water district so uh, we're not necessarily broaching brand new ground on this the last option is that the cost of this uh, be levied against the entire town, all of the town. We have played around with numbers. Uh, Brent, our town manager, has played around with different financing numbers, and we've presented these these numbers at previous meetings. We've uh, we've thrown out one hundred eighty thousand dollars is what we think is reasonable. Certainly, less than two hundred thousand dollars seems reasonable. If we finance that over 15 years, it comes out to approximately $16 a month for those 60 some odd parcels in Jersey Heights. So I am going to, that's a very quick synopsis of this issue. I know we've spent many hours talking about this. There's much more to it, but we have come to a point where we as a board, in my opinion, do need to make a decision. Um, we need to make a, a decision soon. The state is waiting for us to make a decision. They have been very favorable waiting for us, uh, holding on to this large grant and um, letting us get to the point that we're at right now. Here it is, August 5th. We began this discussion oh, back in our very early June. I think Brent was uh, hardly had his feet wet uh, when, when we took on this this notion. So 
I am going to turn this over to the board and let the board offer opinions or questions or comments. Brent, do you have this. anything that you want to speak to first on this? No, I, I, I think that Don has covered it. I mean, we can get into further detail, if, sure. but, um, you know, my, my recommendations like the board um, was that um, special tax assessment district would be a solution for this. Um, <coughs> the town accepted responsibility for roads and sidewalks. You know, I've, I've tried to research back in history to find out why we would have ever taken over the stormwater permit. I think it was because there was not an HOA. And so we wanted to assist the residents of the select board at the time wanted to assist the residents. Um, they also wanted to protect against the 20 to 30% liability that the town had with the roads and, and sidewalks. But I don't think that the select board, you know, even thought that there was potential for the legislature to respond to federal threats of, of lawsuit uh, to retroactively create new stormwater rules. So um, it was a good deed that's now sort of being punished. Um, so it's my recommendation. This is the best solution for all residents. But Don covered it well. I, I will say too, just for the record, and this has been stated in the other meetings many times, but the, we as a town are responsible for approximately 30% of the 20 to 30%. I don't think that's been accurately delineated yet because we do, we do, um, we are responsible for the roads and sidewalks there. So 30% of whatever that cost is, is, is going to be leveled, levied against the entire town. But 70% is what we're talking about. The remaining 70 to 80% um, could fall if we do agree on a special tax assessment district that it would fall on the, uh, those 60 some odd parcel owners in Jersey Heights. So uh, I'll start the conversation uh, for the board. Um, I went back and requested from Todd um, sort of the history of the permit process that began back in 86 uh, with an Act 250 mm -hmm. permit. Um, it clearly delineates Jersey um, Heights as a subdivision. And that um, is carried forward. So basically, that was its birth certificate. Um, it was carried forth and from Act of 50 and uh, other permits, which included um, stormwater permits um, up to the present date. Um, I think, in fairness to all taxpayers, because that's what we were elected to do is to represent all of the community, that uh, we need to accept the responsibility of the roads and sidewalks um, and the subdivision of Jersey Heights um, should accept the responsibility for that portion of the stormwater. I think beyond that is, is that you know, looking forward, we don't know what we don't know. Um, nobody 20 years ago would have thought that we'd be sitting here having this conversation. You know, town took over the road and the sidewalks, thinking that you know this is where we were going to, you know, because this was an accepted practice. Um, had we not done that, and had we not uh, signed over onto the stormwater permit as a good deed, um, where would this be leaving Jersey Heights? Um, you know, would, would you folks be here tonight asking us for assistance because there is no assistance, you don't have an HOA and the state and federal government is saying you need to remedy this process. I think this is the best of, a, of a, an unfortunate uh, circumstance. I certainly don't agree with the retroactivity of this thing, but we don't, that's not a democratic process. We don't get a vote on this. But as we move forward um, in looking at the town as a whole, I think it's important that the town accept that responsibility for the 30 plus percent and that the development uh, be responsible for the rest. I do think that moving forward with the financing, one of the questions that came up was, 
you know, is this in perpetuity? And I think um, that should not be in perpetuity. I think the life of the note, whether it's 15 years or 20 years, once it's the debt has been relieved, that the town accept all of the operation and maintenance of that system. The improvements would have been in place. Um, and we would take over from there. Um, our name is on the stormwater permit as it is, and um, we should um, retire the debt and move on from there. So I would be in favor, uh, I am in favor of the tax assessment district. Can Thank I just you. clarify, are we making a, a, a decision on, are we voting on this tonight or are we making uh, voting on it to go to the ballot for the voters to vote on? We are, that's a great question. So we are making a decision tonight to send this to the voters. Okay. The so voters are going to decide upon the special tax assessment district. Thank you. So, so just to clean it up, that because um, we're getting into opinions here, and your vote is your opinion. So I just want to keep that clear. So I, I, I think that we're getting uh, well. But we need to. We need to decide on what it is that would go to the voters. Right. What so, that decision would be. I may. Mean, no. So <clears throat> we need to make it, the select board needs to make a decision first about whether or not you're going to accept responsibility. The HOA can is not going to be formed. That's very clear from the residents. So the only way to capture these ARPA funds, which are 71% approximately of the cost is for us to provide evidence to the state of Vermont Agency of Natural Resources that the town accepts responsibility. That will reduce our costs right off the top by approximately 30%. So that's one motion that the select board needs to make. And then from there, further decisions about whether a special tax assessment district or just okay the general liability of all the residents of Morristown. And then additionally, whether or not financing should be used. The financing and if special tax assessment district were decided by the select board, you're basically directing Sarah and I to move forward with putting those in front of the, of the voters uh, through, through the November ballot. But the state is first requesting confirmation that we accept responsibility, and that does not need to go in front of the voters. And that's what we're really deciding right now. Well, would be, uh, I'm yes. recommending that you make three decisions tonight. Yeah. And what goes on the ballot is going to come up under other business later okay. in the meeting. Yeah, I just don't want us to get... <clears throat> heated subject so i just want to get focused on what we're trying to achieve here are there comments questions from the board i i will simply say that that i think chris has um, eloquently expressed my position so i'm not going to repeat it but i agree with what chris said in in his indication okay. and that will be my preference as well okay. for the exact reasons that chris aligned thank you george I think this is where we are today, and like Chris said, we don't know what we don't know. So in, in another two years, they could, the state could make changes to the town as a whole. I was talking with Brent the other day, we already we have 10 developments in town, nine or 10 developments in town currently that fall under different permits. Um, so this isn't something new, it's just that we just need to get, get stuff straight. I think that's where we're at right now with that. Okay, are we ready for a motion? I would be uh, willing to make a motion on accepting responsibility uh, first. Okay. And I would motion to draft a letter of intent to ANR as a responsible party to serve as a permittee on the Jersey Heights operational stormwater permit. As per ANR's requirement, the letter should articulate that the responsible party will support advancing the project through the final design and con construction intent of the responsibility, responsible party to be identified as permittee in the notice of intent filings and understanding that upon issuance of the permit, 
The permittee is formally accepting responsibility for the permitted stormwater system and for complying with all terms and conditions of the permit. This letter should also acknowledge the requirement for the operation and maintenance for the life of the project. Okay, I have a motion. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by George. Discussion. And of course, that is a very long-winded way of saying that we are taking on responsibility for this stormwater permit. For the project. Okay, seeing no discussion, um, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Approve the warrants. Do I have a motion for the warrants? So moved. I have a motion to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by Richard. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. Aye. Uh, aye. George? Yep, I'm sorry. Aye. That would be unanimous. Okay, community comments. I can't hear. I'm sorry. I can't hear. Yeah, I'm okay. So that was unanimous? Yeah. Okay. So just a question before you move on to the next piece. Um, where are we going? Is it another business that we're going to talk about the other motions? So another Just business we'll comments. talk about the other motions District in regards District. to the financing and the special tax assessment district. Yes. Okay. Um, community comments. Do we have any comments? Yes. If you do, please come on up to the microphone. Identify yourself. Please uh, try I'll and direct. Try and direct your comments to the chair. Um, what? would be the cost per taxpayer if the whole town paid. Do we have that number, uh, Brent? I didn't, I didn't calculate it out. Clearly, it's going to be much less than $16. It's going Why to be... wasn't it calculated? Yeah. We could do an estimate on it. It's going to be less than, you How know. Much? It's, well, park it. How many taxpayers do we have in town? There's 2,000 some odd parcels in town. And how much money do we need? 180,000? Yeah, it's it's going to be less. I, I hear your question. So how is it going on the ballot that 64 residents should be on the hook for this when everybody gets the same benefit? So the only thing I would say right now, and I, I don't want to get into a discussion, it's really a comment period, but um, that's going to be taken up under other business, you know, how that ballot's going to look. Well, I, at what point, I just can't fathom how we're expecting 60 residents to pay for something that everybody benefits from. Right. I guess my only, my only comment back to you is, is that the development isn't like any other street in Morristown. It, it, is, it is recognized by the state as as a, as a development, as it it is, it's in black and white, and the municipality, the town, did not create this issue, and it's before us to solve. And in in fairness to all of the taxpayers in this community, um, and quite frankly, up to this point, everyone that I've talked to outside of Jersey Way essentially says, I don't feel that the town as a whole should ex should be expected to pay the full uh, vote on this if, if the development through its process has been part and parcel to part of the problem. And I think that the bigger issue for me, quite frankly, is the precedence that it sets by this community um, assuming all responsibility. And I'll give you an example. Um, in the list of the uh, different entities in town that are under the 3P regulation, Coffee Hospital and the Manor are part of that. They were here late last year asking us to take over that road. And it goes down beyond the Manor. 
And the only reason that we didn't consider doing it is in our road policy, it's a dead end road. But had we done that, just unknowingly now, we would have been potentially on the hook for that, that development as well. And I think that since we don't know what we don't know moving forward, whether there's other HOAs out there that says, okay, you did this for Jersey Heights, we have an HOA, we now are responsible for this, we'll dissolve our HOA, and you can be on the hook for the whole thing because you did it for Jersey Heights. I'm not willing to put this board at that risk, and I'm certainly not willing to put future boards at that risk. But it's like 50 bucks per taxpayer. I'm not, I'm talking about long range liability. Right, but long range. So I just want to say, I don't want to get tax district. I, I, the next board could come in here and charge us for plowing the roads. So okay. I don't want to get into about long term. I, I, I just like to say, I don't want to get into a back and forth. This is community comments. We hear your comment, and uh, I, but I don't want to get into a dialogue here. This is not the purpose of this, this item on the agenda. But I hear you loud and clear. We've had multiple meetings on this. this but you haven't come even up. begun to answer our questions. I mean, like, let's say it's $3,500 from your last proposal. Am I going to be able to come in early and just pay the cash and not be charged 5% interest. Why would I want to pay interest on taxes? I'm going to thank you. Thank you for your comments and your questions. My name is Tom Cloutier and I uh, am not a resident and I uh, and have spoken that the whole town should be paying for that. And I said this before, and I don't live in the, in their development. We're a whole town. We should join it together and, 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 and not help them, but it's part of our town. So we pay for it. And I don't know why that is not a choice on the ballot. If you're going to put that choice on the ballot, let, let the town folks decide. And you'll have a chance to do that tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Other comments? <clears throat> do we still you need to identify yourself, please. Two shots, uh, 163 Foss Street. I don't even know if I'm part of the development community. I think my house was built before that, but I'm not sure. Uh, but my question is, how is this going to work? I've heard that it's going to be a pond. I've heard that it's going to be underground. Are people's uh, properties going to be torn up to get all this um, piping and whatever from place to place? There really is no runoff behind, and it's going to be behind my house. I don't own the property behind my house. It's owned by Howard Minash. But that, that is where the proposed system, whatever the system is, I still don't know what the system is. I want to know how it works. I want to know what kind of whatever, whether it's a pond or whether it's uh, tubing that's underneath the ground. That's what I had heard two years ago when they came to do the test holes, that it was some sort of tubes underneath the ground, not going to be seen. Is that still what it is or not? Does anybody know? Have you, do you, this Tyler, whatever his name is, it, does he have the design yet? Have you done anything about designing? Do you know? I, I don't. Mean, we, I, I, we don't know what we don't know. I want to know what is known. Right now, I don't think we have answers to all those questions. And right now, the question is responding to ANR and letting them know that we are uh, taking on responsibility for the stormwater permit and trying to secure that three hundred thousand dollars so that we can we can get the money to to pay for the majority of this project. So it's really still about the three hundred thousand dollars, whether it's needed or not. We have I. In my opinion, and again, I don't want to get into too much of a back and forth. I know I'm breaking my own rule here, but I think we do have a responsibility to the town to make that 
to make that decision. So if you have a responsibility to the town, then shouldn't it be the whole town? And it could very well be under other business that the whole town's going to get to vote on this one way or the other. Yeah. So in regards to the design, the design that was submitted, the proposed uh, a couple of years ago, I don't have the exact date in front of me. That is one alternative. Um, what, what is one alternative? The, the, well, I, I've discussed this in prior meetings, and I'm happy to provide you with information to schedule an appointment with me, but there is a design that's been submitted to the state, and I've shared that design with multiple residents of Jersey Heights in public meetings and in the community. <coughs> And that is one option. There's actually multiple options that need to be assessed by um, an engineer. But obviously, if the town moves forward with this, we're going to assess the, the most practical and cost effective option. This is one where we've submitted to the state already uh, through the permit, and it's, it's a neutral standing, so to speak. Um, we've also received a letter from ANR legal counsel directly stating that they can and they're willing to pursue uh, action against the town as the permit holder. Um, it's in my opinion that you don't want a target on your back. There's one other municipality in the whole state that has removed themselves from being a permit holder and um, it's up to the select board to make that decision, but I think it would be very risky. Okay, so you still haven't answered my question. What is the proposal that you sent to the ANR? Is well, it is it for the tubing that's underneath the ground that not that is not going to be seen? That there's going to be a manhole of some sort where the town, if they do take it over, you go down in your little, you know, down your stairs and do whatever you have to to clean it out, or 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 is this going to be? I've also heard that there is a ponding. Is that part of saving the money to do a pond of some sort in our community? Or are you going to do it underground? I think at this point, we're, we don't have a particular proposal. That we, you ha and, if you and, said and you go ahead, send Brian. it in. We do have a proposal. It's not a final proposal, but it's one solution. And nowhere have I seen a pond in that solution. There could be an alternative proposal for a wetlands. That's typically what it's referred to. And, and most developments do have above ground wetlands. But the proposal that was submitted a couple of years ago was underground tubing, most of it in sections that already have underground tubing, and um, an underground uh, system to process the, the water to become compliant with, with ANR's requirements. Basically comes an underground filtration system. So that's that's what you're saying the proposal is, is the underground? Yes. Yes. That's, that's currently what's been sent to the state as the original design. Okay, but that could change if you decide that it's too expensive? If they, if we have an alternative that um, meets their needs, and we can do at a lesser cost. And obviously we would look at that. You know, a lot of developments today have what they call stormwater retention ponds. <clears throat> and, um, and this is not one of those proposals. I, I would at. hope so, because this is a community and we don't really need a pond in a community with children and mosquitoes and whatever else. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Other comments? Sure, come on up. Maria Ward, um, I've heard a little bit about we don't know what we don't know, and that seems to be pretty darn clear. We don't know what we don't know, but we do know what we do know. You all just took responsibility for this permit. This permit is issued to the town of Morristown. It's not issued to Jersey Court, Sterling Court, Jersey Way, or Fall Street. It is issued to the town of Morristown. And on another note, I have no use for Walton Road whatsoever. I don't travel it, but I'm gonna pay taxes to repair that bridge. I have no use for the Geltz Road either. Don't travel it, but I'm gonna pay taxes to repair that bridge. Tip for tat, food for thought. Thank you. Ms. 
skip award. You just dropped 107,000 on the grand list, 80,000 for a police car. Is this really going to be a burden on the taxpayers? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, schedule. We have uh, on the 19th in two weeks, we're going to have a public hearing on the town plan amendment. We were talking about the town plan earlier at 530. And then the select board meeting will start a half an hour later at six o'clock following the public hearing. And we'll have another select board meeting on Tuesday, September 3rd. That would be the day after Labor Day. Other business. Um, Did you skip September 3rd? Do we need to just mentioned it quickly. Okay. So right. September 3rd is the select board meeting. So the select board meeting on September 3rd, you, we have down at six o'clock. Does that time change or this, should that be? Yeah, is that accurate, Judy, six o'clock on September 3rd? Or should that be 5.30? No, that's on the 19th. Should that that's, be? That's on the 19th, we're talking yeah. September 3rd. Um, should that be 5.30? Sure. Sounds like that should be 5.30. The only other question yeah. I would have in terms of the schedule is um, are we going to schedule a meeting separate or part of the agenda of one of these meetings to, to begin the discussion about um, local option tax and um, coming to a conclusion, any community outreach and engagement? Those are certainly all going to be up for consideration in future meetings. Doesn't it need to be an agenda item? It does. Yep. So I just was wondering yep. at what point are we going to I would, I would prefer as a member of the board to see that discussion either be a separate meeting or um, in the more immediate future, just because I think that we need to um, work through that process. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay. I'm going to move on to other business. Uh, we have a general election coming up on November 5th. And we have a consideration of the charter to be presented to the voters. We have the consideration of the um, financing of money for the stormwater infrastructure improvement in Jersey Heights. And we have consideration of a special tax assessment district for Jersey Heights. Now, it's my understanding that uh, we, on the general election ballot, we can use the back side for at least two of these, that being the financing for the stormwater infrastructure improvement and for the special tax assessment district. But it seems that we cannot do the charter so uh that is not going to be available to us this is what you're saying but is if we piggyback on the on the ballot we don't have to pay for mailings so. we are saving a lot of money if we piggyback on that ballot we're saving <laughs> if it's mailed um i'm going to let our town clerk answer some of these questions in more detail because I know she understands it better than I do, but we're saving somewhere in the order of seven to $8,000 if we do that. Um, so, if we do decide to put the charter there, it would need to go on a separate ballot. It cannot go on the back side. So that's my attempt to uh, kind of bring this conversation to um, a beginning, but I might ask Sarah to step up to the microphone and fill in any other details that I might have left out there so that we should be considering. What are our options to get the charter on the ballot? So this is a really complicated situation that even the town attorney is struggling. Um, it's a real puzzle. So state statute allows uh, municipalities to put local questions on the back side of the general election ballot that they will mail to everybody and pay for anything. It's a way, um, a way for the state to pay for our elections, which is great. The issue is um, 
that to approve a charter, there's all these deadlines and working with the town attorney through the deadlines, there's not enough time now to have the charter in, um, in where it needs to be to be on the ballot um, on the backside of the November ballot, general election ballot, because the state has to print that in a couple of weeks. So we have to, I have to give the state the language by August 20th, the language for any motions that we want to have on the back of the general election ballot. The issue is the charter, you have to have two public hearings and you need to 30 day warning before you have the first hearing. So there's not 30 days before August 20th. Therefore, the charter questions could not be on the back of the ballot. So the choice is, um, A, we have a separate ballot in November on the same day as the general election, we have a local ballot, we just would have to pay for it. It would be seven or $8,000 to mail everybody their ballot. It would probably be four to um, have the ballot available, but people would have to request it. It wouldn't be mailed. Um, or we can wait till March and, and have the charter question on the town meeting ballot. The issue there is we won't meet cross over with the legislature that has to approve it. So they won't see it until March of 2026 or January of 2026. So that's your option with a charter. I, I'm, I'm trying to read the email I just got from the attorney um, while we were in the meeting. Uh, the timeline for um, if you decide, um, so you've decided that you're gonna take the responsibility for um, the Jersey Heights storm water permit. So now you have two choices. One, you can decide that you need to finance that over time. Um, and the voters ultimately will yay or nay that, but you can decide that that needs to go to the voters. Um, if you decide that you don't want that to go to the voters, that means we need to come up with that money out of the budget right now and we pay for the whole project in once. So you need to decide if you wanna finance it long-term or just figure out how to pay for it in the budget. That I think there is the time, there is enough time to put that on the back of the November general election ballot that the state would pay for. And or if you decide that you're going to have the charter vote in November on a separate ballot, all the um, all of the local questions should be on that um, ballot. So it would go with the charter vote. And then you need to decide if you are going to um, spread the payment of of it with all the taxpayers or if you're going to create this special tax district and that could like the finance question be on the back of the november ballot or it could be a separate ballot i don't know i'm not involved with any of this enough sorry um to know the timeline when that decision needs to be made i don't know if it can wait till march or not um I've only looked into if you're going to put it either of those questions on um, the November one. So if you vote not to put any of these, it would default to you're paying it in one lump sum and it would be divided by all the taxpayers. Those are those are the defaults. Does that sort of yes. answer some of the yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, is that um, if we want to talk about the financing piece, we want to make a motion on the tax special tax assessment district and have the charter. The choice is that one way or the other, we're going to have to do something separate. And we either do that separate and bear the cost of mailing a separate ballot in addition to the general election uh, ballot, um, or we ask people to come in or request because they can request that you mail it to them. Um, which in, in turn would <coughs> cost us some money. Um, and uh, that's that's really what we're boiled down to. Yeah. And I don't think it makes any sense to delay the, the charter uh, into March because 
you know, as Sarah said, crossover dates in the House and Senate vary. And um, if it's not there, they wouldn't take it up as a new piece because it has to go through four committees, two in the House, two in the Senate. So. And, and I would say about the charter that, you know, we've spent a lot of time on this charter and there is some very important language um, in regards to the town manager, how he runs the town that's not in the statutes, uh, that given that if we don't get the charter through, we greatly limit what the manager can do, which is what we hired a manager to do, but he can't do it until we have the charter. So it's, um, you know, to, to wait another year and a half to be able to, you know, provide the powers for the manager to do his job just seems really futile. This is really not, this is an <coughs> I agree. Yeah, waiting oh, until 2026, it just seems yeah, absurd. Yeah, we're paying, uh, you know, this gentleman and to tie his hands seems brutal. Brent? Can, can I just ask, a, I know I'm supposed to address a question to you, so this question is addressed to you for Sarah. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, I, I will let her know what your question is. So um, I wasn't copied. Um, on his uh, email to to Sarah, but I thought that the the, the potential uh, warning that was in question about being able to meet the timeline was specific to the charter. So I want clarification as to the timeline that that, that he has proposed would work for the other two potential yeah. uh, votes, at, or because because I didn't I it wasn't listening carefully enough to to Sarah. And I just want to—I want a clarification on that. So I've asked Sarah. Her answer seems to be in the affirmative. Yeah. Um, yes. Let me. It just came in, so my calculations it worked okay. Microphone, maybe. Thank you. Sorry. In the timeline that I had created, there there was enough time to do the the two potential Jersey Heights questions. I I want to read the email he sent. Um, attached as a revised schedule for a special town meeting with a charter vote, borrowing vote, and special assessment vote, assuming that any of those go forward, all of the proposed dates will work. So I'm thinking that that means that yes, um, the charter doesn't work on the back of the general election ballot, but the, um, the other two, if you choose to go forward with the Jersey Heights ones, or one or the other would work to put on the back of the ballot. The backside. So the only thing that needs to go separate that would cost us an additional money would be the town charter. Correct. But if you decide that you um, really want the charter in November, then you would put them all in one ballot. I, I don't I, I don't Understood. think you should. I would confirm with legal, but in my opinion, I think that would be Keep confusing for the voters and I would put them yeah. all in one. Valid. Because either way, we're gonna have, we were gonna have to do something. So yeah, it's gonna um, cost you the same amount of money. Kind of where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. And if we, yeah, and if, and again, just to reiterate, if we mail it to everyone, we're talking seven to eight thousand dollars. Yeah, that's just a quick guess, if, and then the the difference would be the postage, which I think is around three thousand. And if we don't mail them, about half of that. And they're going, the general election ballot, that ballot will be mailed? That's going to be mailed to everybody. So it's potentially confusing. <clears throat> Here I am, a tax, a, a voter in town, and I'm getting this ballot mailed to me. I could see how a lot of people wouldn't even know that there is another ballot if we don't mail it to them. I thought we, I thought we voted to mail all Australian ballots to the voters. I thought it was a... Yeah. So um, you, you have been voting on it at each election but i will i hate to have an opinion because um it, it should be your opinion but but we have been mailing um voters their ballots since 2020 um all local elections we um so but you have voted on that every time but it is a really big expense 
that you're spending to mail everybody their ballots. Um, I, I would, and I would just add, one sec, Chris, I, I would just add that, mm -hmm. you know, we know the participation rate when ballots are mailed is much higher. And yeah, it's money spent, but I think it's, again, in my opinion, it's good money spent if we're going to mail them and get a larger portion of the of the residents of, of Morrisville voting. Um, so, my go ahead. My question is, I mean, in, in the reality of it, what's the net difference? Because if you can call in and get it mailed to you, um, there's an expense related to that. So whether you, what's the difference between, on average, in your experience, people wanting them mailed? I mean, does it cost $4,000? So the net difference is really $4,000? Uh now I'll tell you, I, I can tell you because I looked up this afternoon, how, what were we at for the primary because you have to request those ballots. Um, we've had 97 people ask for the primary ballot out of out of 4200. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it, I think it really depends on um, will people know that there is a ballot and an election happening and will people know that they need to request it will come down to how many uh, requests we receive so we are, used to get about 40 for town meeting day pre 2020 um, do you have any idea of the time commitment to do individual mailings as opposed to one mass mailing i mean that's seems like getting calls would be very labor intensive well, that's what we're paid for, so. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, these are all very important questions that as many um, voters should have the opportunity to do this. And we know in reality that as much as we want to be good stewards in our community and, and participate in the process, um, that doesn't happen unless they have a ballot in hand um, and can choose to do that. So, well, I, I still know, I, I don't, maybe I'm out of school. We did vote, the board as a whole voted to mail all, all and I don't know what the specific or specific type of vote, but I know I voted negative, and Judy Bickford also voted negative, but the rest of the board voted positive to mail the ballots to everyone. I thought we did too. So that's that's why I'm wondering why this is even a question. I, a because reason? it's been for each election. So you did vote, but that was, that was just specific for, for okay. that election. Okay. I think this is too important to either parse between we'll do two now and one later. Yeah. That doesn't work. It's too confusing if we try and do 50 50. Mm -hmm. These are, as Chris said, all important things the charter, the, the, um, the charter, the borrowing of monies for the Jersey Heights project, at least the authority to borrow money, uh, depending on how much we need to borrow and, and who's who's supporting it. That's a different guy. That's the third question is where's that money going to come from yeah. for it. That's a very important topic. I mean, clearly people here that are representing Jersey Heights are, are frustrated with that, but we need to hear from the entire town. And that's how you hear from the entire town yeah. is, is to give them a ballot and ask them to, to weigh in. And if a majority of the people in this town feel that the, the, the cost for Jersey Heights should be borne by all, they will vote that way. They will reject the, the, the um, special tax assessment and that will tell us it's ours. We just told said we're going to be responsible. Yeah. Is it either going to be through an assessment with Jersey Heights or is it going to be through a tax rate? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's going to be on a tax rate if people vote no on the special assessment. If they vote yes on the special assessment, then we have our answer either way. I, so I think we've, we've got to spend the money. I don't like spending the money, but in my opinion, anything else is, I won't use the term that I want to say because it's inappropriate, but it's, it's not appropriate to, to just divide it up. It looks chopped. Let me use chopped. Agree, George. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that it costs money to get large numbers of people to vote, but that is the reality of the world that we're living in today. Yes. And we've done this experiment enough to know what the answer is here. Yes. So any other, just before I open it up to the public, I see three hands out there. Uh, Tony, you're going to be up first, but any other questions for Sarah from the board? No, but we, we need to formally make a, um, a motion 
is correct. We will. Yeah. Okay. We, well, would you like to make a motion before we open it up for a conversation, or? Um, or would you like to get some? I'm not sure why I'm making the motion. Okay. Well, yeah. for, first, we would talk about um, the special tax district, and the second would be how we finance it. The motion is really to to yeah. our motion tonight is going to be to direct Brent and Sarah, our town manager and our town clerk, to prepare a warning and to prepare a notice for a special town meeting to be held November 5th, and which would have a town vote. A town vote. Yeah, a town, well, special town meeting, I guess, yeah, town is, is, town is, the, okay. is the term. But, um, and we have three things to consider, the charter, the financing, and the special tax assessment district. I'm, I see three hands out there. Tony's had his hand up for quite a while. Your second. Yeah, uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So we got 1,800 voters that vote in this town pretty consistently. You got a checklist, right? Why can't you take that checklist and vote those? I mean, send out them 1,800 ballots to the people that vote. And, and then the people... It's only common sense. <laughs> yeah, but legally. You got 2,000 people that are taking that ballot, throwing it away. Right? It's too bad common sense and the law don't merge, but yeah, okay. obviously she can't do that. Yeah. It's, it's a nice yeah. idea, though. Yeah. So who said, who said you can't do that? I'm pretty sure in the state statute, I would have to mail everybody, or it would have to be by request. So those 1,800 people can request their ballots. And you and well, Tony, you you and I could hand deliver them too and save postage. <laughs> no, but no, uh, yeah, now I'm breaking laws. Yeah, I'm kind of responsible for the first class postage thing, so I'm just <laughs> trying to help you out, okay? Yeah. But I, it's worth checking into. It was. I think, we I got think, the same 1,800 people that vote all the time. I think we know the answer to this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Erica Scott, Jersey Heights. I'm woefully not like kind of in the loop the way I should be, so apologies. Um, I just quick question about now that you've taken responsibility with the state, is there a timeline now that starts like a talk, you know, clock that starts ticking where now you have to have things fixed? I just curious how that I know ANR usually is usually some kind of clock that starts, but yeah, we've had clocks ticking for quite a while now. Yeah, but, well, exa yeah, but, that's why I'm wondering, like now that if you voted saying the town is responsible, I know the rest, the votes come later, but yeah, is there a Eric, I'm gonna let Brent answer your question. So uh, I've been working regularly with a and um, and they proposed um, milestones and other, other requirements for, for the town to complete. And uh, we've had legal counsel review that and uh, propose questions. Those questions have been answered. There will be a final draft uh, outline of milestones and requirements uh, you know, with various dates, but the town can once again come back to them based upon, to a &R based upon this final draft and, and request any amendments. It's basically the negotiation process. And when I originally came on board, they were saying, you know, we need to get this done by the end of June. So they're being flexible because they see that the select board is is working with them. Um, but we will have that buttoned up probably in the next couple of months. I just got another email today from a and uh, asking me to fill out various information. And I responded back that there might possibly be a vote tonight. So. Online in our packet, there is a milestone and deliverable schedule that you can take a look at. Thank you. You can have my copy if you want to take a look at it. If you don't mind, I'll take it. That's draft. Right, but I mean, it's, yep. it gives it's it's draft, draft, right? Yeah. It gives you 
I think the only reason I was at my fear is that, and I get it, I wouldn't want to be in your position, don't don't want to switch places. It just seems like that there's a lot that still isn't known. And then it seems like we're, you know, I get it, we're only 60, 60 residents here and there's a whole town full of people. And if I was on the opposite end, I'd, I'd probably, I don't know, I mean, I'd like to say I'd do the right thing and say we'd all come together and pay it, but maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. But I just feel like right now we're rushing and there's just a lot of big things we don't know, like what the future holds. I think that's my my fear. I'm not saying I wouldn't agree to pay the monthly. I just, I think that my fear is that there's a lot unknown. So I guess that's why I asked about the timeline, like what's the rush type of deal. So, but thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> Wally. Thank you, Wally Reeve, Jersey Heights. A um, couple of comments and a couple of questions. One comment is, have we done the research as who paid for and who is continuing to pay for the stormwater system that supports Harold Street and that entire area, which was generated by uh, a request by DeMars Corporation to increase the amount of payment they had. And that generated that, and that system was built and is being maintained. I believe it was paid for by federal money, and Mr. Rice stated it was probably being maintained by the town. So that's a little bit of a precedent, but it was long before you were here, and I know it only knew about it because they dug up some phone cables when they did it. Um, I made money that way. Anyway, my question is, there's a lot of unknowns about what this is, project is going to cost. And there are no shovels going into the ground between now and next construction season, which is after town meeting. Uh, ask Brent a question. Will the funds from the state pay for the engineering designs and all of that work prior to the town spending a nickel? Brent? So uh, there, there is money built into the budget for, for engineering, and um, that's $31,000. Um, as far as I can tell, the town has paid for that thus far because we haven't been able to accept the funds. Um, that $31,000, it's been estimated to be very high, even though it was pre-COVID, there's all sorts of contingencies built into this, this estimate that's pending. So we've not, we've already put money into okay. some of the costs. We've not been repaid thus far. Okay. So my suggestion to the board is because there's so many unknowns in costs that you might consider putting that the tax incentive financing district and that amount on the town meeting day ballot when money questions for the town are typically decided. And these people, myself included, would then have a more accurate picture as to the cost to the individual property owners. Okay. And some misconceptions I think I've heard here this evening, people do not understand that a tax incentive financing district is, ex is extremely specific to one item and one item only. So if it goes forward that the Jersey Heights development is part of a tax incentive financing district, it's only for the cost of installing the stormwater upgrades. 10 years later down the road, you can't send us a bill for plowing the roads. That's, that's what one gentleman was concerned about. You can't do that. So that's part of the work. And I was involved with the Cages Falls project on the village trustees. That's how I understood that. And I believe that's probably paid for by now. No, but it's getting close. Okay. So Thank again, yeah. but again, possibly a lot of these questions would be a lot clearer to the residents and the voters if we had some firm figures, which would be at town meeting day. Yeah. Just to be clear, this is not a TIF that we're we're considering. It is a, a, a special tax assessment district, but well, just I, I think not they're, to split I think they're hairs basically the same thing legally. They are. They're, they're similar. Yeah. They're cousins. So I just want to again yeah. narrow the uh, conversation here. Of what what we as a board need to do is we need to decide if and how we want to direct the town manager and the town clerk in regards to the um, vote on November 5th in regards to a charter and the financing and the special tax assessment district. Well, 
I would have to say I'm curious uh, what, is what Wally discussed possible? How would that affect us? Can we delay those, uh, the two Jersey Heights till, uh, till March and then it would go on the regular ballot? And would we delay the charter as well till March? No, we can't delay the charter. I, I don't think we can delay the charter. But I greatly appreciate what Wally is saying is that if, if we don't have to make the decision today, and we can come back to everybody with much more solid answers numbers. and numbers for our, for town and everybody, I think uh, there's if we don't have to rush that boat, let's not. I just don't know if we have if it's hurt it. No, I'm yeah. we'll wait for Dante. No, go ahead. Yeah. So. I'm intrigued by what Wally said too, but now as I think about timelines, and a lot of what Wally's saying is out, we have better numbers in March than we do in November, no doubt about it. However, if we wait until March, and not to make a presumption, are we gonna budget in the town budget in case the special tax assessment district fails, which now we need all the money coming from the tax payers, as option one, I mean, it's playing both out. But so we're going to ask them for the money as well as asking for a tax rate increase. That seems not a way to sell a budget in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I agree. Um, and on the other hand, so now, now where do we get the money for the for the project? We still qualify for the grant. So if we're, if we're still going to find the other money, Richard. That's right, all I'm I, saying. I understand what you're saying. But yes, this, this motion or this. Uh, ballot item says borrowing an amount not to exceed two hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So we still qualify for the three hundred thousand from the state, yep. excluding that. Yep. Um, I think what Wally's saying is to try to get the number. I mean, I know exactly what he's saying is to get the number narrowed down. And I and I'm just just food for thought for to yep. say what you're saying. Um, if we put the not to exceed two hundred thousand on the on the ballot for November, right. and then in March we did uh, option C with a more specific dollar amount there i mean we, we're already on the hook one way or the other if the if the tax assessment district passes or fails on whatever whenever we vote on it it is what it is right i mean but i want to i don't want to catch up no i'm just we're gonna we're gonna pay for it one way or the other but to present accurate numbers to the voters i think is i think that's pretty important so i they know I, what they're voting on i would as well richard and i guess I, i'm gonna ask brent i think he's probably waiting at the bit to answer it is the two hundred thousand is is not based on who's supporting it. It's the rest of the project. It's right. it's the money above the grant, as best we know right now. Correct. Yeah. So, so uh, yes, and that two hundred thousand dollars an additional buffer upon contingencies that were already put in place. It's just you know a safeguard. Um, and so, if you look at the the milestones deliverables. Uh, by March 1st, we have to secure com commitments from all affected landowners for easements. easements. Thank you. And then we also have to complete town procurement for final design services. And at that point, March 1st, first, we have to first establish responsibility, which, which we did tonight. So that's one down. But we have the additional two responsibilities of securing the commitment from all affected landowners and com uh, completing the town procurement for final design services. And at that point, we can then move forward with requesting reimbursement for those portions, those costs for those portions. So um, I have checked with Tyler Mumley, who's a, a project manager for this, to have him review the whole proposed timeline the state has presented. And he said, yes, it can be done. Um, but he's listing a whole bunch of contingencies that are possible that might be less expensive than the one that's been submitted to the state and is pending. Because at the time, the only reason it's pending is not because the state didn't accept a solution. The reason why it's pending is because at that point, they required an HOA in order for the funds to be accepted. So um, by March, we will have more definitive definitive information um, and we will have to have procurement done for final design services by March 1st. So 
Tyler Mumley has said that he's able to do that. He's also said that there might be alternative solutions that cost less and fulfill the requirement. So this $200,000 is like worst case scenario in my mind. Okay. Based upon the information that I know and double checking and triple checking, but you know. So just, so what I'm hearing from everybody here is that um, the B, borrowing money, this is just giving us the option to borrow it and we'll borrow it if needed. So that might be, a, we should do that so that we have the ability to borrow that money. Because it's the ability to borrow yeah, money. Yeah, this is the ability to borrow the money, but that creating the tax assessment could in theory wait until um, uh, till March, is that true? Or are we gonna run some risk of missing deadlines? And because we don't wanna front the money and then try to get it back. So March election, sorry, Don. No, it's okay. <laughs> March election, uh, Sarah, you know, I want, I want Sarah's input. You know, we'd have to be going back for the same warnings, the same sort of number of days that Jim has provided to Sarah that I have not been privy to yet. Um, so it's, there's danger for March, I just don't know what it is. And we have to constantly be planning on the, the required warnings. Um, and just to add to what George was saying, that if if um, it becomes the town's responsibility, then we've got to figure out where it's coming from. So, which goes into budget negotiations, which we would miss. And, and budget yeah, is voted in March, but it's finalized at the end right. of January. Yeah, that's so, so it's not really March, it's, it's January when the, the board will have to make that's a determination <laughs> based on administration's recommendation of a, of a proposed budget to put yeah. before the voters to meet all of those requirements. Yeah, so March is not really March. March is end of January. I, yeah. I, I like Wally's idea. I, 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 I just, there's part of me that says, I, I don't know. Wait. I totally agree with you, George. I think you're there and I'm here. Wally, you're going to need to come up to the microphone, please. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I just say these people here would feel much more comfortable <laughs> voting or supporting your proposals if they had a more con right now it's kind of like a cloud mm -hmm. yeah. and, yes. and we know clouds rain so let's <laughs> let's <laughs> yeah. i noticed sooner again um i yeah. put you in a quandary i apologize but yeah. you asked for <laughs> okay i need to uh yeah go ahead i'm just trying to Maybe I'm missing something, but I'm assuming that us accepting responsibility for the project pretty much secures that $300,000 grant. Is that accurate or not? We're certainly hoping so. That, that's the first step, but there's there's additional okay. milestones. Right. So that's kind of where we're at, is we don't, to, to George's point, we, we need to plan for the budget, and this $300,000 grant is not guaranteed right now. Is that? Without... Yeah. Well, we, we accepted responsibility for the project, which I'm under the impression that that's... Yeah, we'll be negotiating further with the state, okay. too, because they understand that we need contingencies. How can we move forward if we can't, if we need easements and we don't have agreeable parties to get the easements? And so I've had these discussions. Legal counsel has, has you know, conferred with me. They've, they've actually reached out to a &R as well. And once we receive the final, final draft, then there will be further review to make sure that there's contingencies to protect the town. That's that's when we will we'll get formal approval that we're getting the three hundred thousand. I think that's what we're trying to do. So I, I'm just going to bring the conversation back to this guidance to the town manager and the town clerk. It sounds to me like we want the charter to be voted upon in November. I know we're not voting right now, but I'm getting a lot of head nods. Yes. It sounds to me like we want the voters to uh, decide whether we can borrow up to $200,000 for a period not to exceed 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds to me like we want to mail this to the voters. Mm -hmm. 
unfortunately all of them, Tony, but. So the question, the outstanding question then is the special tax assessment district. Do we want the voters to decide on this in November? I, I'd really like to just narrow the focus of this conversation to that right now. Because I think that's the only thing that we, I believe that's what we need to decide. So, so a question. Look, I'm trying to not be biased. I'm the only Jew inside to be biased on. If we only put up the, uh, put the job automatically, but the, only the $200,000 borrowing article in November, does that give a complete picture to all of us? People here certainly understand that there's another piece to this that's going to come in March. But others may not. So they see we're asking for two hundred thousand dollars in borrowing, and that's what he's going to say. That's my issue. Yes. And, then, and then they say, so so obviously we all of us are going to be paying for this, right? And there's there's a, a better chance that they might vote that down, right? Because the question is going to come up. Yep. You know, it's um, why are we doing this? And, and we've had these conversations before. I think that if we're looking at November, that the three articles go on a November ballot, we've got two more months to try to firm up cost estimates with Tyler. And uh, if he's unable to, maybe we look at a, a different source. But um, I think you can't have borrowing and special tax assessment not part of the same conversation yeah, yeah. To, to, to your point stuff. they they are wet george aren't they, they are, I, they, I think they go hand in hand they got to turn around and go back to the voters in march with yeah. the te special yeah. tax assessment it's going to be yeah. it's going to be really confusing i think we need to be right up front right from the very beginning on this despite, despite the fact that i like all these idea about yeah. to accuracy I don't think it gives the voters a, a complete picture of what we're asking to do. So, folks, I'm going to be looking for a motion. Well, let's do it in three three phases here. Going um, three we, separate motions? Well, we've already uh, voted to, on the proposed charter. Um, but we need to we need to make the motion to direct the town clerk and the town manager to for the, right. the uh, to prepare the morning. I think it's one and you choose what options you want. Can yeah, okay. Easy? So one one motion, including all three. Okay. Or two or one. Right. Yeah. So for conversation's sake, um, I would make the motion to include in November's ballot um, the uh, proposed charter language. Um, I would include in the November ballot um, borrowing money not to exceed $200,000 for a period not to exceed 20 years to pay for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvements in Jersey Heights development and uh, include uh, creation of a special tax assessment district in accordance to 24 VSA chapters 87 and such. And to be mailed? And to be mailed. And to be mailed. Okay, do we have, excuse me one sec. One sec. I don't think you can vote on adding that to the ballot until you've taken the vote point, that you want to establish the tax system. Point of order, we have a motion right now, so I need to I need to ask for a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I will open up conversation in just a sec, discussion in just a sec. Um, discussion from the board on so that. My assumption from this, this conversation, the purpose of the motion was to direct the the manager and the clerk to develop language to bring all three of those to fruition. I agree that that's why I asked this originally, is should we be voting on this individually and then directing the clerk and yep. the town manager. So if I had my druthers, um, during, since this is a conversation piece of the motion, I would withdraw my motion, draw the second, Mm -hmm. Vote on these two separate articles and then direct the manager and the clerk to work on the language, legal language for the member ballot. Do you want to re remove your motion? I will. I do. Remove your second? It's, Our it's second. Made on, but yes, Sorry. Legal, but... Okay. Is that good with you? Is that good with you? Yeah. 
Okay, let's try this again. So we've we've already uh, made a motion to adopt the proposed charter as presented. Uh, I would make a second motion to create a special tax assessment district in accordance with 24 VSA chapter 87, section 3251, 3256 to pay for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvement in New Jersey Heights development. Okay, so you got the charter, you got the third one. What about the second one? I'm, this is a separate motion. On its own. Okay, so you're gonna do A and C together? I'm Another doing, on I'm our doing paper? we've already done A. I just made a motion on C, and then I'll make another motion on B. So we have three different motions. Okay. Which one would you like to discuss first? Well, I just made the motion on, on C, the special tax assessment. We need a second. Do we have a second on the creation of a special tax assessment district? I'll second that. Okay. okay. So now the discussion is, is, is that. Okay. Which motion would you like to discuss first? It's the only motion. It's the only motion. We've already done the charter. I made a motion now to create the special tax assessment district. We'll, we'll vote on that, and then I'll make a separate motion on the borrowing capacity. Okay. So that the, so they are married. Um, okay, so my before. confusion comes from, we have not voted on the adoption of a proposed charter as something to be uh, sent to the town manager and the town clerk. Yeah, the three of them will be sent to the town manager and the town okay. clerk. Discussion. Okay. Oh, there's a hand up there. I can't Robert, read that. Robert. Hello, Robert. Oh. Uh, you might want to unmute yourself. Hello, Robert. Oh, you're muted again. You were unmuted, but you're muted again. Okay, go go ahead. What is the size and shape of the problem we're trying to solve? How many phosphates, how many nutrients, pesticides, uh, etc., are being pumped out of the Jersey Heights um, development, so-called? And when you get done spending a couple hundred thousand dollars, how much is going to be saved and not go into Lake Champlain. I don't see any size and shape of the problem. What's the issue? How much effluent is going from downtown Morrisville? How much is coming from Jersey Heights? How much is going to be coming from Monash Meadows? I don't see any statistics. I don't see any data that says how much we're polluting and we're going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to solve a pollution problem the size of which we have no clue yeah robert it's a good question and of course the legislature decided to pass this legislation well, let, me, um, let, me, and let me ask a question the legislature passed something that said three acres why Correct. Not five. Why not ten? They picked the number out of the air. No, they got this from the ANR, which views itself as the last kingdom on earth. ANR decided several years ago that the solution to Lake Champlain by the EPA said it's too expensive. We're not going to do it. The EPA then threatened Vermont with a failing grade as a green state, and ANR did a 360, or a 180 rather, a complete turnaround overnight and stiffed us with an unworkable pollution abatement program. Nobody knows the size and shape of the problem. I don't wanna spend a couple hundred thousand dollars if I don't know what I'm solving and I don't know after I've done it 
whether I've solved the problem or not. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Time to tell the ANR to take a powder. Yeah. So I'm going to come back at the back to the motion that we have to consider right now. Um, okay. Go ahead, Wally. Just try and direct it to the motion, please. Yes. Quick question. Um, the motion that you have is. Can that be limited to address the expenses of only the stormwater restoration project? Because I know the rules for TIF can be. This is something, this is a cousin, I don't know the answer to that. So if you made your motion that this would only be used to recover the owner, property owner's share of expenses for this restoration project, I think we would all feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, it's, the wording would include for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights neighborhood. Right, but what he's asking for is, is that um, that the authority of the special tax assessment district would be only and specifically for the stormwater improvement. So if I could amend my motion to reflect that, um, that would satisfy that suggestion. So to put the word only in there, because it already talks about it would be that the special tax assessment district would be uh, only for the uh, improvements uh, to pay for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvement in the Jersey Heights development. So to pay for only, yeah. so the word only in front of the, the state's required stormwater yeah. infrastructure improvement, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think that would satisfy you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So at some point here, I need some clarification on exactly what this motion is before we vote on it. Yes, go ahead, Tom. Is there some place in, in there to let the people know that it could be paid from, from the entire town? If they if they vote no for the, uh, the, the, for the Jersey Heights people, that there is an other option where the whole town pays for it. Could yes. be put in there. Go ahead, Brent. So Sarah, Judy, and I spoke with legal counsel last Friday, and I wanted additional language. I was proposing additional language based upon language from years ago uh, for the special tax assessment district that was voted for and approved years ago because it was more descriptive than what we received from council. And we discussed it with him and Vermont, Sarah can speak to this better than I can, uh, but Vermont rules require that we limit the verbiage. So the voters need to be informed beforehand because what they're going to see, and what they're voting on needs to be limited in what it states. So that's the importance of informational meetings right there. And yeah. Basically, he explained okay. that um, you need to keep your motions as simple as possible so that there's no question that there's an opinion of the board written within the words of the, the motion mm -hmm. that's on the ballot. The board mm -hmm. could have opinions and, and share information at the informational meeting, but you can't have it in a warning of the motion on the ballot. Yeah. And the, the, the default, if this fails, would be the town. Right, exactly. I think, Tom, to your point, I think it's incumbent on the select board and the administration to, to get that information out because if we don't and this gets defeated, that's not the time for us to surprise the taxpayers to say, well, guess what? We're all paying for it. I mean, that, that's ahead of the time. That, that we've got to be clear on the implications of a yes and a no vote on this. As much as what, what I agree with Sam, we can't confuse the issue by writing a paragraph because then people are going to know exactly what we really are asking them to vote yay or nay on. But I think it is on us to say, if you, if you vote for this, this is what happens. If you vote against it, this is what happens. Okay, so Chris, your motion then that we're about to vote on is creation of a special tax assessment district in accordance to 
24 VSA chapter 87, 3251 through 3256 to pay only for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvement in the Jersey Heights development. And George, you're good, you're good with that second? Yeah. Okay, so I have that motion in front of me. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So then now. I would further go on to say that um, we would make a motion um, to borrow in an amount not to exceed $200,000, which gives us some leeway, to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years to pay for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights development. So I have a motion and a second. Do we want to put the word only in there as well, to pay only for the state? Sure. Yeah, you okay with that? A second? We're raising this money only for that stormwater so infrastructure. So it does say to pay for the state's required stormwater infrastructure. So by implication, it's basically, that's the, that's the, I mean, it's semantics, I think. Yeah. Discussion. Okay, so all those in favor of borrowing amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years to pay only for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights neighborhood. Say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. So, so now do you need a separate motion to have? Yeah. We should, because that's what we're, we're directing. We're, we're so directing. I would also recommend that when you are having your informational meetings about what voting yes and no means for right. proceed, right. you need to, to explain yes or no. No is not voting down the project, no is voting down paying for it over a period of time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we have one more motion then? So do you need a motion to direct you folks to do that? Yes. Yeah, so the Suggested language at the top, the motion to direct the town manager and town clerk. Now that you voted on the individuals, mm -hmm. we really need you to do us another motion to direct us to to do all three. Yes. yes. Yeah. This yeah. is the one the attorney wanted. Yeah. The attorney said you didn't need to make all those other three. You could just had not. And yeah. if you were in agreement, then this is the motion. The yeah. I think for clarity's sake, it, it was. The right thing to do. So I would I would make a motion to direct the town manager and the town clerk to prepare a warning and notice for a special town meeting to be held on November 5th, 2024, to include the adoption of the proposed charter uh, for the boring uh, of the uh, infrastructure improvements and for creation of the special tax uh, assessment district. Second. So I have motion by Chris, a second by Richard. We're all understanding that clearly that was a Cliff Notes version of those of that I'm motion. Ask, that was the motion is actually all of the language. That's correct. All the verbiage that's on there. That's yeah. correct. Are we in discussion? We are in discussion. Um, can you add whether or not you want the if you can you add if you want the ballots all mail, can you add that? If you don't, then you don't have to And to mail ballots? And to mail ballots. You okay with that? Is there a second? Sir? Okay, so I'm going to read this whole thing just to be clear then. Yeah. So the motion is to direct the town manager and the town clerk to prepare a warning and notice for a special town meeting to be held on November 5th, 2024, to the, include the mailing of ballots, the adoption of a proposed charter as presented, the borrowing of an amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years, to pay only for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights neighborhood and the creation of a special tax assessment district in accordance with 24 VSA chapter 87, section 3251 through 3256 to pay, for, to pay only for the state's required stormwater infrastructure improvement in the Jersey Heights neighborhood. Is that correct? Yes. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. 
be unanimous, Judy. I would. I'll second. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn by Richard. I have a second by Laura. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Aye.